In this video, I would like to talk about interleaving practices, which is a very effective tool that students can employ to gain expertise in their domain of interest. Uh, uh, before I forget, subscribe to the channel and share this video with other people to increase visibility so that it's easy for me to keep on doing high quality videos. Many students uh, who embark on a degree program on a science uh, seem not to have clear one basic thing. Mathematicians, physicists, engineers, and all those dealing with math related subjects are first of all problem solvers. Performance is a priority. It's not a compromise nor a second option and consequently if you study any of the subjects you have to figure out ways to gain expertise one common way to achieve expertise entails carrying out mass practices in other words to shape their problem solving skills students always do along with the study of theory a lot of practice consisting of assignments textbook exercises and exam problems unfortunately by and large students carry out mass practices that is they spend a lot of time solving the same category of problems because they do overlearn and do not explore alternative problems they miss out on exploring different issues simultaneously when presented with different problems from that particular category they know by heart they do not know how to solve them since expertise implies the ability to solve different problems how might we achieve this goal well the answer is uh, by strengthening our discrimination skills. Discrimination skills require the ability to extract the rule and an expanded conceptual dictionary. An example of rule extraction is encapsulated into the interesting experiment conducted by researchers to explore a student's ability to transfer resources from a problem to a distant one. More specifically, students were first given the following story. A castle is protected by a moat, a mind, in strategic points to prevent the enemy's massive attacks. So how does the general of attacking forces attack while avoiding mines? Thereafter, they were presented with this other problem. A person suffers an untreatable tumor, which can be removed only by projecting radiation against it. However, due to the position of cancer, it cannot be excluded the possibility that during the treatment, other tissues are destroyed. For this reason, is there a way of removing the tumor without damaging the adjacent tissues unless researchers explicitly suggest looking for similarities between the two problems the students did not leverage the common traits to solve both problems regarding the expansion of the conceptual dictionary two studies show how possessing a large recipient of concepts made students more competent in the first study participants were split into two groups and asked to explore different painter styles using mast and interleave practices. Mast practices consisted of being exposed to a painter's work at the same time, whereas interleave practices allowed students to mix different painter study. Contrary to the initial beliefs, researchers found out that interleave practices produce better scores due to the higher power of discrimination enhanced by the simultaneous exposure to different works, which delivered a higher number of nuances and concepts. This allowed students to expand their dictionaries and empower their interpretation skills, despite the longer time required to interleave the practices. I want to underscore the phrase different works, because it is through the differences, rather than the similarities, that one can expand the conceptual dictionary. In the second study, participants uh, were asked to link a particular bird to their family. This task clearly calls for a deep study of birds classification like canaries, nightingales, thrashers, which are of different types, although they belong to the same family. To locate each family, it was necessary to carefully link it to particular traits like the beak, location, sites, etc. It is uh, true that some Treats belong to one specific family and likewise it is also true that not all species of a family share the same treats as experienced in the first experiment in their living different families different species guaranteed a better discrimination power due to the increased archive of nuances these facts can be beautifully illustrated with a simple picture in other words if we compare different problems to see similarities and if we interleave them, contrary to solving mass problems of same type, 
then we increase the ability to solve new problems. Seeking similarities between different problems is an example of comparative analysis. To keep it simple, suppose you want to improve your memory and for this purpose you decide to think about three situations in your life in which you show to have fantastic memory performances. These three situations refer to the same phenomenon, memory improvement, yet they have completely different content. Looking for the X resources, as I call it, uh, based on what these distant situations have in common is the same as seeking similarities between different problems. What does this mean from the student of math, engineering or physics standpoint? Now, uh, consider a linear algebra and suppose that after studying the theory you want to test your knowledge. To this purpose, you begin to interleave different problems and you notice that Despite the differences, uh, they both make heavy use of a theorem. The comparative analysis is useful because it reminds how the theorem has strategic importance for that particular subject. Using an analogy, if you carefully inspect three situations in your life in which you have shown to be particularly creative and notice that you adapt one specific behavior in all three situations, this would represent evidence that the behavior is indeed critical to success. So this is the role of comparative analysis and this is how we will be used for increasing for uh, expertise. To understand this subtlety, let me share with you a couple of examples that I have designed using mathematical combinatorics. The purpose of each problem is basically the same. We want to calculate how many ways we can arrange three horses from 20 or three balls players from six. Think of it for a while. How would you go about to answer these two problems? Don't you think these problems are actually asking the same thing? Pause the video and take five minutes of time to think about it. If you did not interleave problems, chances are you would answer, well, yes, they basically are asking the same thing. So why should I do overlearning? Well, actually, it's not that simple. I must say that, unfortunately, solutions are different. Why is it so? Well, it turns out uh, that they are different because the assumptions are different. More specifically, in the first problem, whenever we select a horse for the first position, we can tap into a set of 20 horses. And whenever we select a second horse to place in the second position, this choice will be dependent on the first choice so that we will be able to tap into 19, not 20, horses. In other words, this problem is dominated by the assumption of order. In the second problem, this assumption does not apply because a team made up of A, B and C players is equivalent to B, C, A or any other combination of players. Therefore, in this case, the assumption of order is dropped. Since order does not matter, we have to remove the redundant teams. In other words, when you study, remember to test your skills by performing a number of exercises that allows you to capture the highest number of rules studied in that particular textbook's chapter and remember to mix the type of practices using interleaving idea. If you're studying, if you're studying, for instance, chapter three, mix up the exercises you find in this chapter with the exercises in the past chapters you have not solved yet. So that's all for today. If you have any question, drop a line below the video and see you soon.